Howdy folks, so this morning I woke up with a dream. I don't know who this is for, but so I had a dream about a single mother had maybe a toddler, a little boy, inside a grocery store, and it felt like you're being chased by a monster. And I don't know if this is symbolic, um, but there seemed to be a portal or a door that opened up suddenly, and you were able to run through this portal, and the monster couldn't chase you through the portal. Um, and maybe this is just something that God wants me to speak about, but, you know, for a lot of us as God's children, you know, we are his beloved, and yes, the storms of life, the monsters are going to come, they're going to attack, the enemy's going to try to deceive, he's going to try to confront you, he's going to say, oh, you're too little for this, so, or you're too old, you can't have this, you don't know what you're doing, but at the end of the day, God's the one that's going to have the ultimate decision. And, you know, something that got me last night <clears throat> when I woke up from this dream was the very fact that God reminded me that, you know, my children are going to, my twins are going to look better than Lindsay Lohan, okay? And I just, I had this notion go through my head. And, you know, when God does something, when he creates something, you know, he does it for, he doesn't just do it for the fun of it, you know, he likes to outdo himself, um, and so this morning I just thought, somebody needs to hear this, somebody needs to understand that no matter what it looks like, no matter what, who the enemy is, no matter what the circumstance looks like, just understand that there's more that stands on your side than what's in front of you. So you might have a hidden army of angels surrounding you. Um, and so I just, you know, every night I, I go to bed and I ask the Lord to cover my spouse. You know, I ask Jesus to cover her and to protect her, you know. And, you know, to protect the things that are important because, you know, I believe that God's going to bring in a brand new generation through her, a brand new bloodline. Uh, three prophetic children that I really truly believe have a gift in the prophetic. Um, and that one of them possibly is on the autism spectrum. So it, it, it bothers me a little bit because, you know, I'm on the spectrum. I'm autistic. And later on, I'm, I'm, I want to talk about it, but I want to talk about my testimony and my trials and, you know, how the enemy keeps trying to draw me back into a weakness of mine. So... I just, I want you guys to understand that God has you at this moment in this time. A lot of you are waiting on your kingdom spouse. You're waiting on your, your prodigal to return. You know, they've been mean to you. They've, you know, they've deserted you. They've abandoned you. They said you weren't theirs. And, you know, and when they finally come to the realization that you're the one for them, guess what? God's going to have them desperate for you. He's going to have them running back to you. And... When it's the right time, if God's told you to prepare, get ready and prepare for their arrival. You know, God's told me to prepare, you know, and he knows how long it takes for me to clean a house. I'm not perfect, you know, and at least trying to keep things organized and doing the laundry, you know. I almost feel like a Cinderella, you know, do the laundry, do this, do this, do that, do that, you know. And for me, it's like, God, I would be so much easier if she was here. If she could help me do this, you know, but then again, God's prepping her, God's preparing her to make a final entry, you know, a grand entrance, because I believe that he's going to put her up to the task to literally to surprise me, you know, a lot of you guys need hope and you need to be strengthened. And, you know, sometimes we need people to speak over our lives and so I'm just going to put this in here. I want you guys to understand. I do walk in the prophetic and I do hear the Father's voice very clearly. So if any of you guys need a word of knowledge or prophetic word released into your life, um, you can email me at the address that's on the video. Um, and you'll have to send at least 25 for a donation for this. But if you'll also include... Um, at least four colors. Um, I have a friend that's doing bookmarks, uh, Christian bookmarks. So, uh, email me your name 
and a Bible scripture that's your favorite scripture, and I'll have him uh, put that on the bookmark, and then your address so he can send it to you. Um, all the proceeds are actually going to help people that are on the autism spectrum. So, um, and I just, I want you to know that, you know, giving to a good cause like this is so important. So, but beside the fact, you know, some of you might need more than just hearing an encouraging word like this. You might need something that's personal. So if you really truly need a word from the Lord, email me, uh, and uh, give me the description of what you want me to pray about and what you want me to hear back from the Father. I warn you, my words bite like a rattlesnake. So uh, when I release a word, it's accurate. Um, I had somebody on YouTube who tried to make me look bad, but I'm not worried about it. God will correct the person. He will correct them because, you know, you don't touch God's anointed. You don't lie about them. You don't make them look bad. One of the things that keeps coming to mind is the whole part that some of these prodigals out there, and especially for these kingdom unions, you know, the whole the whole pure love situation where, you know, God's agape love and his pure love for us just happens to be in these kingdom unions. Um, and that God has chosen your partner from the very beginning of foundation of time, you know, um, mine used to always say, oh, you know, I'm afraid of a, a, of a, an arranged marriage or get over it because if God spoke it into existence, he got, he spoke it into existence. That's what he wanted. Um, two scriptures are coming to mind in Jeremiah 29, 11 and, and Philippians 4, 13, you know, you can do all things through Christ Jesus. He gives you strength and God's got a purpose and a plan for your life and it's unfolding right before your eyes. So, if he told you to stand at the train station and wait for the train to come through, then you need to stand at the train station and wait for your kingdom spouse to get off the train. Don't leave the station. A lot of times you guys are going to miss what God has for you if you disobey or you don't follow his instructions to the T. You may have already been given an assignment. God may have already assigned you a kingdom union and you may already know who your spouse is, but you might just have to be a little more patient and trusting on this, you know. Um, and I and I just I want to put this out there, you know. You might be like me. You might be on the autism spectrum, and your your significant other or your kingdom spouse might be, you know, questioning the handicap, and that's the only thing that's stopping them. And you know, for me. My favorite song is Can't Dance by Megan Trainer. when it comes to this situation. It's like, look, I understand that you don't understand the spectrum, but that doesn't mean you don't know, how, can't learn how to dance. Just hold my hips and, you know, follow the movement, you know. Um, and so it becomes frustrating to me because it's like, you know, God showed that to me, you know, and he showed me how my prodigal is going to come running home. That, you know, she knows that she needs to come home and that she's finally just going to, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm not going to wait around anymore. And, you know, the longer she waits, the more I feel like my heart, my heart just wants to burst into two, you know. It, it just, it hurts, you know. I love her that much and I know that God gave her to me and it's like, there is no other person. There isn't not another girl in this life that I love that much. And, you know, no, God's not going to assign me someone else. You know, you have to continue to stand for your kingdom spouse. You have to continue to stand, cover them. A lot of you are going to have to deal with warfare. And you're going to have to stand up against these demonic spirits. You are going to have to fight back against them. You are going to put them in their place, cast them into the fire. You have to bind them. And you got to remember, once you bind, then God will come and do the rest. And another thing, too, is whatever you give energy to, you magnify. So I want you guys to understand that what God's doing in this season is he might be preparing you, and then he's preparing your spouse as well. He's trying to get them ready, too. So if you're a man, listen to this. Maybe you're a woman. Maybe God's got you being prepared in the back, and you're trying to get your dress ready. You know, and I started thinking this out. I'm going, does she really, truly want to marry me? Or is she just lollygagging out there? You know? 
or is she out there actually trying to find a wedding dress that looks so perfect? And I try to talk to her spirit. I try to tell her as if she could hear me. I'm saying, I'm marrying you, not the dress. You know? And to me, that's not... It, it, it's. I know it's important to her, but at the same time, it's like, I, I don't care whether it's a thousand different dresses that you try on. Just pick one. And, you know, and I can't be frustrated with her. I can't be upset with her. Because, you know what, this is her wedding. This is the thing that she's getting to do. This is once in a lifetime. And, you know what, I want her to look good. She wants to look good for her husband. That's what she wants. She wants to be able to stand there at the aisle and know that she's taken my last name. And that she's finally, finally, finally taken her vows. And she's waited her whole life for this. And for a lot of you out there, you're like me. You want to rush your spouse. They already know. They already know that you're their kingdom spouse. But at the same time, it's like you're trying to rush them. And you're like, just hurry up with it. Just get it over with. You know, come home. Just get over with. Stop whatever you're doing, you know. And it's like, for me, it's like I'm, I'm watching two dogs right now. And one of them just doesn't want to. Go potty on the grass and she thinks I'm playing with her. Just go potty. Just go potty. And it gives me such a headache. And one of them refuses to come in the house and thinks I'm going to chase it. No, I'm not chasing you. Get your butt in here. You know, and I don't want mosquitoes in the house. So, you know, it's... And that's where part of, part of this is like, you know, God knows my kingdom spouse. He knows the traits that she has. He knows the characteristics. And he knows her strengths. He knows her weaknesses. And you know what? Maybe she can handle certain things that I can't handle. But maybe she has to go through a little bit more training before she finally ties the knot. And I don't know. God hasn't revealed some of this stuff to me. Um. But, you know, I just... I want you guys to dial down the ambient noise and look at the surroundings around you. Slow things down a little bit and ask the Lord to show you and identify what is holding your spouse back. What's holding them from commitment? What's holding them from, from marrying you? If you're a female listening to this, what's holding back your husband? What's holding them back? What is there any bondages? Is there anything that they're into? Are they not born again? Because here's the other thing too. God cannot assign your union and put you two together until your kingdom spouse is born again. And I give congratulations to Shannon out there, you know, for prophetic marriage ministry. You know, and this is you know, she had hell of a ride getting her husband to come to her. Antonio just didn't want to be part of her life, you know? And it makes me think, even with mine, she just... I feel like, yes, she knows. I feel like she knows that I'm her spouse. I know that God's given a revelation, but it's like, what are you afraid of? Just get on the bandwagon. You know, quit being Vanna White and, you know, quit... You know, you're not Molly Brown. You're not unsinkable. You're not the unsinkable Molly Brown. But just get in with the game. So, just understand that God has a purpose for your life. And He knows exactly what He's going to do. He knows when He's going to do it. And how He's going to do it. He knows whether or not you like being surprised or not. He knows whether or not He has to do it like a surprise. Because a lot of your unions are being attacked by witchcraft. And it may not exactly be your spouse that's feeling a certain way. Or they feel maybe their feelings aren't really their feelings. It, maybe it's witchcraft and manipulation. And you have to cover them. You have to protect them. You have to love on them from a distance. You know, you have to cover and anoint them. <clears throat> and one thing that, you know... I know that at least the enemy's been attacking my voice. And obviously you guys can tell. But it's because I like to sing a lot, you know. And I particularly like to sing to my spouse. I try to, 
you know, I've asked the Father to allow her to hear my voice when I minister to her, you know. It's, you know, he's given me the ability to minister to my spouse, you know. And the devil doesn't like that. He doesn't like the fact that I have this ability to do something and that she can hear me regardless of the distance. And so I want you guys to understand that in this season, the closer that you get to God bringing your spouse home, um, you, you need to go ahead and continue to cover them, continue to believe for them. Um, so, and I know where she's at. I know where God's placed her. And years ago, uh, a friend of mine, met, uh, Dave and Jeannie, met out there in Asheville, North Carolina. And she's out there in Asheville now. She's out in my old stomping grounds. But we used to merch out in that area. We were out in Hendersonville and all that. And uh, we went to those different areas. Um, we went to Boone. Um, but, you know, David and I went out and we continued to, you know, merch, uh, selling product, you know, wholesale product door to door. And we were on a road trip. And I remember when Jeannie said, the girl that you're going to fall in love with and going to marry is going to move out here. Um, and I, I didn't, I didn't think of it until now. Um, but I remember not liking the Asheville area. I didn't, I don't know what it was. Maybe it's because of, of demons or just the area is so demonically controlled. It's, there's a stronghold over the region. Um, and I wouldn't want to move out there. I, I would be okay with Greensville, but that's not where I want to be. If I want anywhere I want to be, it's obviously going to be in Durango or in Pergosa Springs. Um, and so, you know, I remember being out there and I think I remember talking to her when I was in. Sorry, folks, I had to deal with an annoying dog who keeps barking next doors, driving me crazy. Um, so, you know, back to the whole idea of covering your spouse is so important, especially when now we understand that it's not just, it's not just how you feel now. And, you know, your feelings are being affected by voodoo, uh, black magic, witchcraft, you name it. And you have to cover your spouse. You have to block uh, the witchcraft attempts trying to come against your union. Um, and a lot of you need to be able to um, cover your spouse um, with, you know, anointing them, covering them, uh, you know, breaking off every form of witchcraft coming against them. You know, hex, voodoo, jinx, spells, sorcery, spoken words. And you got to uh, denounce and rebuke and block and cancel uh, every separation spell, and every love spell. Um, and what you need to do, and this is the description I'm going to give you. Uh, and this is how we're going to, how you can do this. But I did this with my spouse. Um, I wouldn't, I'm not going to necessarily call it a, a satellite anointing, but it's, a, you know, asking the Father for a special anointing. And what you're going to do is for three days, you're going to spend time uh, in praise and worship music. And you are going to, you're going to start to, you're going to start to build up an anointing, a specific anointing for your spouse. And you're going to start to ask the father for a, a satellite anointing that's connected to your anointing. And, and the way to do this is for the first three days, you're going to anoint, you're, you're going to take the oil and you're going to pray and you're going to ask the Lord specifically for uh, protection over your spouse and you're going to ask that that when because people have done this before they've done it with scarves they've done it with envelopes um, they've done it with napkins and so what you're going to do is you're going to pray over the oil pray over the object that you're sending to them whether or not it's a uh, just an envelope or a napkin or something and so you're going to create this anointing. You're going to create a, a level, a type of anointing that can be used as like a satellite. You know, they're not in the same area as you. They're not in the same household. But the prayer is that the Lord will keep them um, 
you know, protected from the enemy. And so what I did was for the first three days, I prayed and I asked the father that he would cover and protect my spouse. And that when she would touch the envelope, that the anointing that was upon it would jump off on her, creating a shockwave effect um, so that the anointing would cover her. Uh, each p corner of the card I anointed um, and then I used the anointing oil on each on each corner representing the four corners of her property or her house um, and so because you know even even for the state that you know I don't know the condition that your spouse is in I don't know whether they understand the level of warfare that's going on but I'm going to go ahead and put this out here, and I want you guys to have this in your mind. Uh, if you've ever played a game called Capture the Flag in the Dark, uh, you'll understand that two different teams are set up to play against each other. And one of them is going to come and steal your flag. And they have to cross a line, but you have to protect that flag. And so what I did is I illegally crossed the... Well, technically I didn't illegally cross it. Um, so the Lord's already given me permission to protect her. So basically I've asked the Lord is, you know, for a specific, a special anointing to cover her. So <clears throat> we're asking the Lord that he would cover and anoint my spouse to be protected from every form of witchcraft trying to come against her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Okay, and so this is what you're going to say, and this is this is the legal definition that you need to have. So a lot of you have basically, if you've been given a promise like I've been given over my kingdom spouse, uh, God's already given you legal authority to protect them, okay? Because you have to understand that when God gave you that promise, it is, okay? And from the very beginning of time, to the end of time, he saw from the end to your beginning that that's your spouse, that's the one you're going to be with, and this is how you're going to protect them. So we're just going to right now, I'm going to give you the instructions. So you know, for the first three days, on the first day, you're going to establish your legal uh, rights and dominion over the territory, over your spouse. And so you're going to you know, ask, you're going to decree and declare in the name of Jesus that I arise to establish my legal right and dominion over this region and over every territory by which you have given me jurisdictional authority, according to Daniel 9. Um, I think it's Daniel 9.4. I'm not for sure. Don't quote me on the scripture reference, but I believe it's Daniel 9. Um, and so what you're going to do is that you're going to establish your legal authority over the region, over that territory, over their house, okay? That basically... You are stepping in as, let's say, land the you know the the owner, the tenant, or whatever, over the territory, over the region, and you're telling the enemy, no, you have no authority over my spouse. You get your bloody hands off of them, and so at the first stage, you're going to deal with warfare. You're going to stand up against the enemy. You're going to bind every stronghold, every attachment. That the enemy thinks that they have over your spouse um and so i'm going to encourage you if you're not filled with the holy ghost you need to be filled with the holy spirit right now okay you need to be baptized speaking in tongues you need to be prophesying because here's what's here's where it is that when you come into this the devil knows the bible better than you do so a lot of you need to be getting into the scripture a lot of you need to be studying and understanding uh, the legal dominion, because the devil looks at the word of God, he looks at it as a legal way. He's more legalistic than you are, so you don't understand that when you pick up that Bible, you pick up that sword, he's going to laugh at you unless you know how to use it. So, I'm going to tell you, first day, dealing with warfare. Protecting, covering your spouse, uh, as you know, and, and this is why I'm saying that a lot of you might need uh, a prophetic word for me. You might need something from the prophet. You might need something to tell you, hey, I need this, or I don't know how to do this. And maybe there's something that God's got for you that he'll speak through my spirit, but no one else is going to know it, you see? And so 
A lot of you need to be able to know how to hear the Father too and having gifts activated. So during the first day of this prophetic act for you guys, you're going to want to do this. Um, you're going to want to take legal action over the enemy, over the territory. You're going to evict, kick out the enemy, just like you would do to an intruder. If somebody came into your house and tried to come in and to harass you and take over, you're kicking the devil out and you're evicting the old caretaker and you're saying, I am now the legal caretaker based on the promise that God has given me. I am the caretaker over this person. You will flee now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Okay, that's the first one. So day one, you're going to deal with the caretaker thing. You're going to deal with the legal right in which God has given you jurisdiction authority. And at the same time, you know, taking whether I, you know, I would say use olive oil is fine. Um, and you can have that oil, you know, anoint it, you know, pray over it. If you can pray in the Holy Ghost, definitely pray in the Spirit. Um, I would pray. Uh, maybe God will reveal something to you, maybe about your spouse, what it needs to be prayed for, you know. And, and I'm going to tell you, if God, if, until the Lord gives you a decision to actually make physical contact with them, this is about as far as he's going to let you go. Um, I know I got mine backfired on me a little bit, but she doesn't really understand the reason behind it, but that's okay. So, um, don't do what I did. I'm going to tell you, don't send four cards and overwhelm your spouse, okay? That's not, that's, that's not needed. Don't do that. Um, so the second day is you're going to be thanking the Father. You're still going to be calling, you want to call, the first day you want to call Holy Ghost fire and anointing into the oil, okay? You're going to make a declaration, you're going to decree and declare that, that the anointing that's being put on the envelope, that as soon as your kingdom spouse touches the envelope, that it's going to hit them, like it's going to explode. So imagine a landmine that has been set. The moment they open, the moment they touch the envelope, they stepped on the landmine and it already exploded. So that's got to be your mentality that when you go into this, you're taking this to the next level. And this is what the enemy doesn't like is that now you've been given jurisdiction authority over that. So now you have already anointed the envelope and we're going to say seven days from the day you sent it off after the third day, that you anointed the envelope. So on the third day, you're going to anoint the envelope. The second day, during the second day, you're going to write out, I hope you're doing okay, or, you know, something, keep it simple, keep it short. Don't go overboard, um, you know, unless God tells you to say the words, hey, I still love you, I still care for you, you know, don't go far like that. Just say, hey, I miss you. Um, I miss our conversations, something like that. Just, you know, something sweet in general. And then once that's done, then you can put it in the envelope and seal the envelope. On the third day, you're going to take the oil that you've been praying over for the three days and you're going to anoint the envelope on each four corners. But as you anoint it, you're going to decree and declare that each corner of that envelope represents their property lines, okay? That the enemy can't cross. And so in your mind, you're going to believe and say, Father, I decree and declare for every corner that this corner, for this, for each corner on this envelope represents my spouse's uh, territory and property. That the enemy has no authority over them. Um, and you're going to say, I break and I bind every ungodly spirit, every demon being sent on assignment that has crossed this boundary. And that they would be blinded, bound and chained and tortured at the feet of Jesus until it's their time. Don't be afraid to stand up against the enemy. And a lot of you need to be bold in this time frame. You need to be bold and courageous. you got to stand up against the enemy. Like, no monsters by Carmen. Get out in the name of Jesus. I'm bought and paid for the, by the blood of Jesus. You have no authority over my spouse. Get out in the name of Jesus Christ. Get your bloody, filthy hands off my spouse. You have no authority here. You will flee in the name of Jesus. And so you need to take this to the next level. Okay? Now, 
Here's the tricky part. Once you've anointed those four corners, you need to put a stamp on the envelope. Anoint the stamp too, okay? Um, before day three is completed, go ahead and drop it in the in the mail on day four. But what you're going to want to do is to continue to pray over the envelope once it's all been sealed. Continue to pray over it. Continue to stand. Uh, coming against the, uh, the every territorial demon that thinks it has a right because now God's given you authority over that region. He's given you, when he made that promise, He gave, it doesn't matter where they're at. It doesn't matter if they're in a boathouse, in a condo. It doesn't matter if they're on the third floor of an apartment complex. God gave you spiritual authority over your spouse when he gave you the promise. That if he truly gave you a, a promise over this, then he's given you spiritual authority over it. So you gotta take that to the next level and you gotta kick and you gotta evict that enemy. So now it's time for eviction. You're gonna pray over the envelope that night, and I would suggest that you do praise and worship. And I would do the prophetic act uh, closer to the time that you think that they go to bed um, and do worship. Um, and so, Father, I just decree and declare over every person, Father, listening to this, Father, that Daddy God, that you give them specific instructions on how to cover and how to protect their kingdom spouse and how to remove strongholds off of their lives, how to protect them. Uh, Father, I just, Daddy God, I ask, Lord, that you would just send divine helpers and divine mentors into their lives, Jesus, to become closer to them, to help them, Father, to grow. So what you guys need to be able to do now is during the each during these days by the third day you're getting ready to release this okay you're about to ready to release it into the atmosphere so as you're holding the card on the third day you're going to confuse block and scramble the enemy's pathways to the card that the enemy is not going to be able to see it coming so that it doesn't get um recognize that it's being sent out that direction to evict them. So they're basically being evicted from the household. They're not allowed to come back. And the moment your spouse touches it, and this is what I want you to continue to pray and decree and declare, that the moment my spouse touches the card, I decree and declare, let the anointing that's on the card uh, be activated. Let it jump onto them. Let it, let it ravish them. Uh, uh, like a plague, like a sickness that can't be stopped to remove any form. Uh, actually, take that back. Not like a sickness. Um, just say, I decree and declare, Father, let the anointing jump off onto my spouse. Let their gifts be activated and everything that you have called them to, to do. I cancel, rebuke, and block and cancel every form of witchcraft trying to come against this union. In the name of Jesus, and I decree and declare that my spouse is set free from every demonic control and uh, every every uh, territorial spirit that's trying to come against this union. Um, and then leave it at that. And then, <clears throat> on day four, you go ahead and send it out. But I would continue each day to continue a prophetic act for at least the seven days. I would include tracking on it so that you know when it's going to arrive, how long it might take to get there. Um, if you can afford to send it two days or three days and do priority mail, then I would do priority mail. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't run it through the post office on just a single stamp. Um, I would make sure that you can track the envelope to make sure it gets there. Um... And keep in mind that it doesn't really matter whether or not they open it up or not. Your whole point here is that they touch the envelope. They get the anointing on their hands. Um, it, it's it's kind of like if you walked into a hospital and you touched a needle that had uh, a virus in it. And that you pricked yourself on that needle and you finally got the virus. So that's basically your prayer here. Is that the anointing jumps off on your spouse and evicts every ungodly spirit and, and is being sent out to do what has been prayed, you know, asking the Father to do what has been called to do. So, I just right now in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, Father, that you send your angelic host out. That's what I do. I call in the angelic host 
I call in the host of Heaven's Armies. So you can command the host of Heaven's Armies. You can't command the angelic host. So you can command the host of Heaven's Armies to go surround your spouse's house, to evict every demon and, and pull down strongholds. Um, so on the day that it arrives, rejoice. Because they have been evicted. You can command them to be evicted in the name of Jesus and remind the enemy that they are no longer a caretaker or your spouse, that they have to flee. They cannot come back. Um, call down fire on them if they continue to try to stand against you and the promise and trying to come inside the property lines. You can call fire down on them. Uh, strike them with blindness, let confusion be a snare, and have them chained and tortured at the feet of Jesus. Don't be afraid to come up against the enemy and be creative about it too. Be creative about warfare. This is the one thing that the Father wants people to understand and be taught. Is dealing with warfare, you have to understand it's like taking a sword and going and fighting. And I want you to think of the scene in Tomorrow Never Die, or Die Another Day, when Madonna says, you know, she says, sorry, I don't like cockfights, because he, he asked, Gust of Grey's asked if she wanted to place a bet. And she says, sorry, I don't like cockfights. But they upgrade the weapon. And so understand that the enemy is going to upgrade his weapon, because you upgraded yours. You took authority against the enemy, and you basically took that authority to a new level and you took authority over the territory that your spouse is in and you said no devil you have no authority here you will flee and so I don't think my spouse understands I don't think she gets what happened and I don't think your spouse will either I don't think that until the day that they finally understand and they step into their authority that they'll understand what happened so I took legal dominion, I took dominion over her house, over um, the property lines, and I told the devil, nope, you're not allowed here. Because I knew that the attacks were going to get greater, and that she wouldn't be able to stand up to them. She wouldn't know how to deal with it. And so I had to come in, and I had to protect it, and to cover her. And so a lot of you need to do this. You have to cover your spouse. You have to continue to pray for him, continue to stand for him. Um, so that the attacks don't come up against them like this, you know. Um, and you also have to anoint yourself too. You have to stay prayed up. You have to stay in worship, you know. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you need a word, don't be afraid to write me. Um, I am at least $25 for a seed. If you want to give more, that's up to you. Um, but just, you know, give, you know, give me an email about what you want me to pray about, um, after you send the word or the donation, but I will also give you something that a friend of mine is making. So include a couple colors, at least four colors that you might like to have a scripture reference and your name. So what I'm going to tell you, maybe your spouse's name, I don't care, but I'm going to tell you right now. Maybe you need to buy a bookmark for your spouse. You know, maybe, maybe your spouse's name is Hannah, or maybe your spouse's name is John. And that maybe you need a scripture written on that and you want it for them. Understand that God has a way for you. He has a plan and a purpose. So, you know, a lot of you I'm going to encourage you to have a keepsake box. Until God tells you to reach out to your spouse... You know, the letter will be fine. It's not going to be too much. Just don't do what I did and send off four cards. It's not cool at all. You know, you're going to overwhelm your spouse and then they're going to freak out. They're going to be calling your mom and dad and like as asking questions like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm just fine. I just wanted to bug you. <laughs> so don't be afraid to do what God's called you to do. And that in this hour, it's it, it's it's important that you take time with the Father and understand what He's called you to do and start praying about the assignment that God has assigned the two of you together. You know, because for me, you know, my assignment, I know is huge. I know that 
you know, why would a why would a psychic, why would a witch in the past know that I have lots of money coming in? That I would be surrounded by money, you know? Like, the question was, where did all the money come from? And the fact that I wouldn't know what to do with it. That God would give me so much money, I wouldn't know what to do with it. And so it comes on my head that maybe God's called me to be a kingdom financier, okay? Maybe God's called you to a specific type of ministry. So as you do this prophetic act, also ask the Father what type of ministry that your spouse and you are supposed to do. Because God, you know, God's putting you on an assignment. The greater the suffering, the greater the victory. You know, eventually your spouse is going to come running home, okay? And if you hear this, and you do this, okay, and here's the thing. If you feel the Holy Spirit saying, just say, hey, I love you and I care for you, and I'm still here for you, then write that out. But be keep it short and simple. Don't, don't go all over the map. And don't be afraid if God's told you to go home. You know, and I'm saying this just for an example. But if the Lord's instructed you and he's told you repeatedly and said three times, pack your bags, get on an airplane and go see your kingdom spouse and go surprise them because they really, really need you and they're ready to commit to you and they're finally ready for you to come home. Then do it. Don't, don't, don't fight the God. Don't fight the Lord. Don't fight him on this because I'm going to tell you right now. God knows, he knows the perfect, he knows, he knows who you need. He wants to be perfect. He wants things to be perfectly worked out for you. So don't be afraid of the circumstances. Don't be afraid of what he's doing behind the scenes. You may not see everything, but understand that he's working out every solution, everything that you need to have in order for you to have this. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you know your kingdom spouse's ring size, go ahead and get them a ring. You know, maybe, maybe you wait on that. Maybe you have a keepsake box. Maybe you don't buy them a wedding ring yet. Maybe you have a promise ring that you think you know the right size. Maybe God told you, you know, if that's your kingdom spouse, I'm sure God's going to tell you what their ring size is. You know, for me, I'm a nine. I wear an, a size nine, but, you know, I don't like to keep rings on my fingers all the time. You know, and so you, you have to understand that you have to ask the Lord to say, is my spouse allergic to any types of metals? You know, are they allergic to uh, sterling silver? Are they allergic to you know, specific types of metals and, you know, maybe they need holistic gold plating versus just regular gold, you know, um, or maybe it's pure silver, or it's gold on the inside, silver on the outside, whatever, whatever it is, but you need to pray and you need to ask the Lord, you know, and I don't know, maybe God wants you to send them a love gift. Maybe it's just something to say, hey, I've been thinking about you. And you still mean something to me. Maybe you send them a t-shirt. Maybe you visit somewhere. And you just like send them a t-shirt. It doesn't necessarily have to be you. You don't have to let them know that it came from you. It can be anonymous. But just let them know that you love them. And that you're standing for them. You're still continuing to believe in them. But I'm going to tell you, just be strong and courageous. And don't give up the faith. Don't give up the hope. This is a long journey. This is, this is a journey. This is, you have to trust the process. You have to walk, the, you, you know, it's like, okay, if you're going to get on a ride, you don't just get to the ride. You don't just take a shortcut to get on the ride. You have to go through the queue line. You have to go back and forth, back and forth, around and around, around and around. And you have to wait in line. You know, you might have to wait in line for 90 minutes before you finally get to get on the ride for that 90-second roller coaster ride. And so, I want you to know that the Lord has a purpose. And he has a plan for you. So, continue to stand for your spouse. Don't give up. My email address will be listed. And if there's anything that you guys need from me, just go ahead and email me. And I would be willing to pray for you. 
And if you want to bless me with a donation, any amount is fine. Don't be afraid. God will bless you back for it. In fact, I decree and declare over you for every seed that you sow into me, God will bless you back times ten. So I'm going to tell you right now, I have a hundredfold anointing upon me. I have a tenfold anointing on me. So remember that if you sow a seed into a prophet, into, into a prophet, uh, someone is anointed in the prophetic, God's going to see that and he's going to give you a prophet's reward. So I'm going to decree and declare that if you send, if you send five or 50, that God's going to multiply that. That he's going to multiply it by 10. And I'm, I'm also going to pray over your finances as well. Because that's not just a seed. This is a seed offering, okay? When you give an offering or a blessing to anyone, I want you to write in the envelope or in the, in the, in the memo what that seed is for and what you're believing God for. And I'm going to tell you that God's going to come through for you. He's going to stand in agreement with you. And He's going to see in your heart that when you give, He's going to give it back to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over with. So, I bless you guys in the name of the Lord and have a good day.